Again, with that breaking news and the potential sign of diplomacy or success from diplomacy in the war on Ukraine, uh, the head of the Ukrainian delegation, David Arakamia, just a short time ago in a televised interview saying draft peace treaty documents between Russia and Ukraine are at a, quote, advanced enough stage to allow for direct talks between Putin and Zelensky. We have Ali Aruzi on the ground for us in Lviv, Ukraine. Ali, good to see you. This is a major and rather unexpected development amongst all of this. What more do we know? It certainly is an unexpected development. We weren't expecting to hear this today. But as you said, uh, uh, Ukrainian negotiators saying that those peace uh, draft treaties have reached an advanced enough stage to warrant a meeting between Zelensky and Putin in person. Uh, they said that they've uh, reached some of those drafts in those last rounds of talks, which, quite frankly, hadn't seemed to go particularly well. Nobody was hopeful that anything tangible would come out of those talks, uh, not least of all because uh, the Ukrainian foreign minister had warned his delegation on Tuesday when they were meeting the Russians in person not to eat or drink anything in case the Russians poisoned them. By all accounts, those uh, meetings were cold. They didn't shake hands. So this really is a big surprise. Uh, they're saying that nothing has been put down on paper yet, but this is a verbal agreement between the two sides that Russia has agreed to many of the proposals that Ukraine has put forward, with the exception of Crimea. They said that they're not willing to talk about Crimea at all, about in, in any sort of peace talks. But still, this is a huge step forward from nothing tangible having happened in the past uh, between the two countries. Now, they're saying that the, there's no date for them, but they're saying that they are potentially going to take place in Turkey. Turkey has, of course, been brokering a lot of these talks that have been going on in the past. Uh, they say may take place in Istanbul or in Ankara. We're not sure yet. Um, but this is going to be good news if it does happen, because so far, all the talks have been at working level. There's only been one series of talks between the foreign ministers of Russia and Ukraine. So at a presidential level, that's where the decisions are going to be made. That's where a breakthrough will happen if they can come to some sort of understanding uh, with each other. And it also may be an indication that, you know, Russia has realized that this war really is not going in its favor. They haven't been able to capture any major cities here. The Ukrainians uh, remain in control of vast amounts of their own territory. Uh, so hopefully the Russians might be looking for a way to end this war and, and save face. Also in that interview the negotiator gave on Ukrainian TV, he said that the Germans, uh, the Italians and the Turks were willing to give the Ukrainians those security guarantees that they were looking for if they agree not to join NATO. So a lot of advances seem to be made in a very short period of time. It's interesting, Ali, and I'd like your kind of analysis on this as you've been covering this war now for the past few weeks or so. But I'm cautiously optimistic as to what we're hearing, of course, from Ukraine on Ukraine television. And I say that because you talk specifically, of course, about the communications we heard from those talks happening um, in Turkey. The Ukrainians seemed a lot more optimistic than the Russians did coming out of those talks, especially from the reporting that we're hearing from our, our own Keir Simmons. So I'm keeping that in mind as we're hearing this reporting of a possible meeting between uh, the two leaders. There's that. Talk about that a little bit. And also the significance of Turkey, of Istanbul, uh, being a possible peace broker amidst all of this. Uh, that's right. The Ukrainians were more upbeat about it. I think they were trying to be diplomatic as well. Obviously, you know, nothing tangible had come out from the previous talks. And they want to show that they're flexible, that, you know, they are willing to talk to the Russians at any time, at any place, at any level. And they wanted to show that the Russians are the ones being obstinate. They're the ones that don't want to come to the table, uh, especially Vladimir Putin, because he had shown no signs of willing to join any talk. So uh, it, you have to take it with a pinch of salt, I agree with you, mm. until they actually meet and something uh, really big does happen, nothing has happened uh, until that point. But this is, this, is, this is big. And obviously the Turks want to be a major player in all of this. They're the ones that keep saying that they're talking to the Ukrainians, they're talking to the Russians, they're trying to bring the two sides at a presidential level uh, together. So they want to look like the peace broker uh, in, in all of this, uh, this terrible war between these two countries. Uh, so they are going to 
push very hard for this to happen in Istanbul, in Ankara, as soon as possible. But again, a lot of this depends on what happens on the ground here as well, uh, as the Russians are losing territory here that they had captured at the beginning of this war. It may be making them reassess uh, what they need to do to get out of this and save some face uh, and maybe get those guarantees from Ukraine that they're not going to join NATO. I mean, just a few days ago, we were saying that, you know, it's probably not enough for the Russians for, to, to accept uh, Ukraine not joining NATO. It looks like they want some land, too. So mm. this is going to be very interesting to see what comes out of those talks. It, exactly. So, so, Ali, as you're there um, and you're following the developments on this, if you have anything new, give us a heads up and we'll come back to you, of course, with this um, breaking news just developing now. Pretty unexpected, to say the least. Ali Aruzi, thank you.